Yo, I recorded two podcasts back to back. This show's doing exceedingly well. We're on a lot of different networks now. This is C4CW casting 495 celebrities worldwide. I just, uh, I just did a, oh, by the way, I'm once for Grove. <laughs> yeah, man, been chopping it up with the homie, my cousin, biological cousin, Rizzo. R I Z Z O, Rizzo. Man, back in the day, man, old school shit when we first started deep in Everett. Four, nine, five. There were six original members. And my cousin Rizzo, R I Z Z O, was one of them. Yeah, man. And uh, so, flash forward to the future. Um. Man, we used to do a lot of stuff. We used to be quite active in our community on the hip-hop tip. And we were grassroots, man. We used to take cardboard, put it out in front of the house. Because for those of y'all who follow the podcast, y'all know, similar. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. No BS. No BS. I, I, would, not, I would not make it up. But... True to life, true to life, I had similar to Will Smith in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I had a wealthy uncle, well off by Western standards, and um, he took me in, man, so I stayed with my uncle a lot of times, is what I'm saying, and uh, so out in front of my cousin's house, we would have the cardboard out in front of the junk. And for those for those of y'all who don't know what jump means, jump can be anything. It's an East Coast thing. It took me it took me it took me about ten years to get down with it. Now I use it all the time because it makes sense. I mean, you know, so you just a jump, J O N T. You know, jump. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, it could be anything. So we would take the um, we take the cardboard, we had it out in front of the house, and uh, we'd spray paint. With like Krylon spray. And because we were very artistic. We did a lot of things that we should not have done as kids. We were we were for our time, we were good graphic design illustrators. I used to draw. If you're fans of the show, true fans of the show, I we 495 most certainly appreciate you. And your boy, because if you're true fans, then I'm your boy. Your boy, one Sir Grove, used to draw. I used to draw. I used to sketch. I used to pencil. I used to use acrylics. I used to use anything, man. Fucking watercolors, pastels, like real shit. Crayons, markers. I was an artiste. And uh, like real artist. And I took art classes and shit too. In junior high school and in high school. Um... And I still, I still follow. I just, I don't have those artistic skills that I used to. Um, but my cousin Rizzo, he continued, man. He's a great illustrator. He can design characters, and so can Sen, aka Senzilla. Um, and so can the homie YC One. By the way, free young chili, free YC One, the homie chill. Um, yeah, so. We would graph, like take spray paint and, you know, obviously we spray painted like in public where we should not have and it wasn't like kosher, but, you know, we were kids and we were fucking vandals. I'm just saying like we used to vandalize alleyways, the walls of alleyways with our graffiti. I'm not glorifying it. Don't do it. Graffiti is a crime unless, of course, it's sanctioned. Um, and in which many cases, and in many cases for us, it was never, um, but, uh, there was one time, no, it wasn't even sanctioned. So anyway, yeah, we used to spray paint on fucking cardboard. And then once it would dry, we would break dance on the cardboard out in front of the house. Um, it was the thing the kids did for those of y'all who don't know, you would spray paint, you would Mark it up with some, like, markers, some whatever, Bix. I don't know I'm saying, Bix. Some Sharpies is what I mean. I didn't mean Bix. 
You take like a Sharpie and you fucking write some shit like whatever. And then when the shit would dry and you knew that you weren't going to get all inked up from breaking, you fucking break dance on top of whatever you spray painted and it just made it cool. It was cool. And I got to get back into break dancing, man. I started to get pretty good. One of my one of our homies back in the day, man, we had we had a tight knit crew um in terms of our hip hop squad. My cousin Rizzo, DJ Slomo. The reason we call him DJ Slomo is just the style of like slow motion, like DJ like Matrix type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like wiki 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 you know what I'm saying? Like on some crossfade shit. Um, we we're just like, yo, that'd be a cool name, man. Like DJ Slow Motion on some fucking real world Matrix type shit. And this is fucking decades before the Matrix. Shout outs to the Matrix. Um, both real and fiction. So yeah, so it was DJ Slow Mo, my cousin Rizzo. Grove, um, the homie Aaron, and uh, let's see who else was back there in that time frame. Man, I gotta give a special shout out, R.I.P. to one of our dear friends from that time frame who passed, the homie Pete. The homie Pete. Peter used to be out there with us. And, uh, man, Peter was the homie. Peter was the homie. There's a lot of us, man. Rizzo, Slow Mo, Aaron, the homie Sean, my homeboy Sean. Man. Sean, I've talked about it before. Sean was one of the coldest breakers ever. Sean was one of, one of the coldest break. In fact, he was the very first true to life like B boy who had gotten it. De- like out of our like crew from North DVT, he's one of the very first cats that I knew of when the movie Breaking first came out. Like when it first came out, the movie Breaking. I'm not even talking about Part Two, Electric Boogaloo. I'm talking about the first movie. In that time frame of like wild style and breaking and beat street, when jam on it and nucleus broke, when that when when that track jam on it, like you go on YouTube and you look up jam on it by nucleus. For those of y'all who ain't hip to hip hop, man, it's time for y'all to get hip to hip hop in 2020. The homie Sean Lang. The homie Sean Lang was the first, man, Sean Lang was the first B-boy out of our squad that I recall who had all the steps down, like professional B-boy stuff in third grade, third grade, fucking third grade, man, he was a professional B-boy straight up back in the 1980s when the shit first came out. He was a natural. He took to it right fucking away. And like I've talked about before in our podcast before, yo, the one of the cassettes, it came with the, um, I think it was the movie Breaking. It came with the fold out, the cassette. You'd open the cassette and it had all the different moves that were being done at the time. But yeah, man. Um, sorry, I had to take a break there. Um, y'all don't know that I just took a 10 minute break and it was as if I did not skip a beat, but, uh, yeah, man, back to beats and rhymes and, uh, DJing and MCing and hip hopping the homie, Sean Lang. Um, man, I need to reach out to Sean, man. I haven't talked to Sean in ages. Sean, uh, was gifted, man. He was gifted, and I've talked about it at length, man. Sean was like, he was like a Jackie Chan style dude back in the fucking 80s, man. He could just like, he could do parkour. 
He could fucking like flip off of walls. He could do like all the like ninja moves like dude. And we were fucking like nine years old. And sh- Sean should have been CIA straight up, man. I'm just being, listen, listen. Sean was lethal when we were fucking kids. And, um, man, he had, he was, uh, when we were kids, he had some of the first, like, fucking deadly weapons that could be purchased from, like, um, you know, the different martial arts shops that sold shit back in the fucking 70s and 80s that by today's standards (laughs) is not fucking, would not be at all legal on the streets of the United States. Uh, Or probably anywhere in fucking North America. Certainly nowhere in Canada. But, um, man, we were kids. And Sean was fucking, like, doing, like... You know those Shaolin Monk videos where it's, like, never challenge... uh, Why you should never fight a Shaolin Monk? Sean was, like, hardening his body like that. Punching fucking tree stumps. Like, man, look... Sean, 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 I I say, I say is an old soul. He's an old soul. Um, the rumor was that his dad had been in Vietnam, um, and was like green beret. Sean himself is like, I think like a reincarnated, like, like he's like that dude from, he's like that dude from, uh, Assassin's Creed, like real to listen I'm fucking being honest. I'm being honest, man. Anything and everything you see, you know the dude, you know that dude on on the internet that um he's like it's like real ninja. He's like the UK dude and he does the backflips and he like punches the like fucking like like wooden dummy and shit and the like rubber like dummy and he's in the backyard and he's got the like sidearm pistol and he's doing all kind he's got like camouflage like cargo pants and shit and he's like doing all kinds of highly extremely lethal fucking ninja shit that dude is ultra rad ultra fucking rad sean lang was doing that shit when he was nine years old type shit real fucking shit and he was the first b-boy who i ever knew from the west coast that could do every fucking move that you saw in the movie Breaking, including the crazy leg shit, including the like double, like triple jointed, like I'm just saying, like crazy leg shit. Yeah, that's real talk. That was, man, that was the first time I had ever seen and witnessed in my lifetime anybody in the United States of America have the B boy culture down fucking pat. And I was learning shit from Sean. He was teaching me stuff, man. And I wasn't getting it all. You know what I mean? Like, right away. You know what I mean? And and some of the stuff he did to this day, I'm still scratching my head. Like, how did he know how to do that shit back then? I'm talking about advanced breakdance shit. Anything you've seen on stage, a motherfucker just stand in front of you, do a forward flip, do a, a frontal flip, backward flip, side flip. You know what I'm saying? Diagonal flip. Like, dude, he could do all that shit, man. He was an acrobat. He was a ninja, like a real ninja. And he had real ninja shit, too. Blow darts, fucking swords, um, katana blades, like ninja tabby. There was a place in Seattle that we used to go to um, in the International District of Seattle. And they had imports. They had import shit. And, um, man, they had ninja uniforms. I had Tabby. We all did. It was a thing, man. It was a culture back in the day. There was a dude we grew up in with in our neighborhood. He used to walk through. Um, he was he's legendary in North Everett. He too. Um, he used to walk through the neighborhood and he used to have a, a samurai sword. Like straight up, legit, like samurai. And uh he used to fucking walk through the neighborhood with the sword for years. Forever. And um, at some point, he uh, I believe he joined the military, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe he actually went into the U.S. military. 
And, uh, but yeah, man, we used to party together and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, man, those were the days. DJ Slomo, Rizzo, O-S-G-O-E, your boy Grove, Sean, the homie Clinton, um, Aaron, man, Pete, so many of us, man. Back in the day, the homie Scott, the homie Scoot, fuck man, the homie Arn Dog, we all grew up together, man. Hundreds of us, hot, too many, too many, too many names, man, to name. Hundreds of us, because man, we all played sports, and uh, there were different, obviously, neighborhoods that we would go to, and we would connect up with all these different kids, man, and it, and and. Because the internet didn't exist, whenever there was a fad, it was like everyone was doing it, boys and girls. And then, of course, there was the boys and girls club that was like right down the street. It was kind of like the boys and girls club was kind of central to it all. It was at the center of it all. Everything kind of revolved around that. And the boys and girls club was in the northern part of, it was in the, in the north of the city, but it was in between, it was in between different neighborhoods. So if you were in the Riverside, though the Boys and Girls Club was in the Riverside, Bayside was like two blocks away. You know what I mean? Because that's how close Riverside and Bayside are to each other. Riverside is right here with the North Everett Boys and Girls Club. And then like two blocks up the hill is the Bayside. So you had kids from all around the county, not just Riverside and Bayside. You had kids from South Everett. Shout outs to South EVT. You had kids from South Everett who would come up north and they would play at the Boys and Girls Club. And those fields, those fields that they had, those multiple fields that were there, um, you would see kids wearing different colored attire for their team, you know, the different team colors from from the fucking whole school district. From throughout the not just the school district, but the county. For so multiple fucking school districts of kids with their school colors and shit, you know, for the teams that they fucking played for. So quite literally there were thousands of kids from throughout the county, and then our crew, there were hundreds of us, hundreds, man, shit, North EVT back in the 70s and 80s was like that movie, The Gangs in New York, (laughs) it was like The Gangs in New York, and it was like the movie The Warriors, it was like The Gangs of New York and the movie the Warriors. And then in the 19 fucking 90s, late 80s actually, in the 1990s, the shit became like the movie Escape from fucking New York. Yeah, I just said, in the 70s and 80s, North Everett, aka the EVT, was like the gangs of New York and the movie the Warriors, and then in the late 1980s, going into the 1990s, with the migration of gangs from all fucking 50 states up into the EVT, because you could profit more from selling dope, crack cocaine, powder, rock cocaine, in the Puget Sound, Pacific Northwest, state of Washington, In the little old town of EVT, a person selling dope, it was stated in national headline news, could make a higher profit in the EVT than anywhere else in the United States. In in EVT, a person could make a higher profit on the average than in Compton, California. Yeah. Than in Long Beach, California. More money than in the CPT and LBC 
You could make a higher profit in the EVT up the map up north in the little old town of Everett fucking Washington back in the motherfucking day. What a, what a fucking surreal reality that shit was. So when various sections of neighborhoods burned out and the shit reached crisis levels, dude, that shit was like escape from fucking New York. I ain't even fucking playing. And now they're dealing with the opioid crisis. Now listen, parts of the EVT have grown and have repaired and have revitalized and are cleaned up and the shit has been re-imaged and it looks brand fucking new in spots and prices have gone up with Amazon and shit. But other parts have never fucking have never repaired, have never healed, have never re-imaged, have never uh, recovered after the recession. And shit is worse than it was in pockets, in parts, which is, as y'all know, the dichotomy of it all. And now they're dealing with the opioid crisis. So, yeah, yeah. Wow. Flash forward to the future. Here we are in 2020 hindsight. Once a grow. Thanks for tuning in to yet another episode of C4CW casting 495 celebrities worldwide. Let's get that hip hop back on and up and running for the new decade. Yeah.